Hey everyone, we're back with another teardown. This one is of the new EVGA cooler. This is an FTW Ultra Silent cooler. Now they put it on a 1070 Ti because that's the latest card, but this might come to other cards later from EVGA. The big change here is that EVGA, although they've done some great things with ICX this year, is still behind in performance numbers versus some of their competitors who have fatter coolers. That's the nature of going with a lot more metal. So they've decided, you know what, enough of trying to fight them in a different game, a different league. They now have a 2.5 slot cooler of their own. So it's pretty fat. They actually use the full three slots for the expansion cover and uh, two and a half for the aluminum fins and all that stuff. So we're going to take this apart today and see if it's any different underneath and how this might be relevant for EVGA cards going forward. But before we get into that, this coverage is brought to you by iFixit.com and their ProTac Toolkit. iFixit is refreshing their ProTac Toolkit in time for the holidays. You can find a link in the description below to the ProTac Toolkit and other toolkits that iFixit sells. We find the ProTac and Essentials kits to be the most useful for DIY enthusiasts. Okay, so this is the 1070 Ti FTW Ultra Silent and it's, this is not the ICX version. The ICX version would cost entirely too much. It would make basically zero cents given 1080s nearby in price. And even though we're not really looking at performance or anything right now, we will, but even ignoring the price to performance of this particular card in the 1070 Ti class, we can still learn from the cooler. And EVGA is probably still doing stuff with the cooler uh, for other designs later, maybe. That's what one would assume given that it's a completely new design, they're gonna want ROI on it. So this uh, should be quite a bit different from what they have already, at least in mass. The biggest challenge EVGA has faced is with their two and a half slot coolers, they perform decently, but when you noise normalize all of the coolers, things like the Strix and the Gaming X come out ahead. The Strix comes out ahead because it's about this width, so it's got a lot more mass in here. The Gaming X 1080 Ti also has a pretty similar heat fin size, or a fin stack size, I should say, not heat fin. So similar fin stack size and larger fans because it's a taller card, but EVJ is falling behind there and they're trying to make up some ground with this card. So uh, we'll see if they can actually do it and reduce their noise a bit because by adding mass to the fins, they are going to be able to run the fans at a slower speed, which will benefit, obviously, the noise levels. So what we have here is uh, we're going to be using our new mod mat. So self-promotion right here. This is our new Gamers Nexus mod mat. We are making them now. They're in production and we're pretty excited about them. Uh, the, they are up for pre-order if you want one. Shipping in sometime in hopefully uh, January and uh, they are anti-static. So it's an anti-static mat. Comes with an ESD bracelet, ground point and all that stuff. Plugs straight into the wall to ground you. So pretty cool, but uh, for the back plate, it's held on all with Phillips, pretty straightforward and easy. And it should just pull apart once we get all these out. So I uh, will speed through those. And then we've got four of the main uh, spring tension screws for the actual cold plate. Where are we stuck? Oh, there's a screw hidden under the so this, this uh, sticker here, this is not a warranty void if removed sticker. EVGA won't remove your warranty or prevent you from doing a, a repair and replace if you break that seal. That's basically there from what they tell me to determine if their support team needs to do any additional checks uh, once they get your card in. For example, looking at the thermal paste. This, by the way, is awesome. This is a little magnet that comes with the iFixit kit we're using. So I think we can now remove the back plate. Yes. And here what you've got is EVGA going crazy with thermal pads like they have been since the ACX cards. It's not a bad thing. So they've got a, a, uh, a decent size pad here for the back side of the chokes. That's what that is on the opposite side of. And then we have a pad for what looks like memory. Okay. So they, they only have a p one pad for one memory bank, and it's this one. And probably the reason for that is because it's, as you can see by the backside here, it's adjacent to the capacitor bank and the MOSFETs and the chokes. So it's going to be the hottest memory 
and they've got a pad on that one. They don't have a pad over here or over here. They probably don't need it though. This is the back side we're talking about, not the front side. Uh, pads here for small components around the GPU proper, back side anyway. And let's, um, let's pull this off and just get it on the back plate so it doesn't get stuck to the mat. Now for the heat sink. Okay, my goal here is to remove this without having to remove the expansion. And that we're gonna have to. Okay, so DVI, we haven't dealt with one of those in a little bit. I still prefer that they're on there actually, but it does mean we're gonna need another hex head. Goodbye. So another giant thermal pad as EVGA does, looks like about a half millimeter, one millimeter pad maybe. A 1070 Ti GPU, which is the same as the 1080 GPU and also a 1070 GPU for that matter. So what we have here is the base plate, obviously. Take that off. Base plate helps spread heat from the underlying components, which include memory and the VRM. So here's what we got. This is an FTW board. It's the same as all the other FTW boards. This over here is, uh, is not a thermal pad. It's just a foam block to help provide some resistance from the, that side of the cooler when it pushes down. So this is just a brushed aluminum base plate. It has no surface area, no fins, so it's not ICX. ICX would have the pin fins as they call them. Technically, that should help, but it's largely a theoretical advantage. It doesn't necessarily realize in any practical way, and you pay a lot more for ICX. We like the technology on ICX, but for a 1070 Ti class piece of hardware, it doesn't necessarily make sense to pay for because you could step up to a 1080, and pay the same for a little bit better performance at the same price as ICX. So this is not ICX. You can see a little bit of grease there from the thermal pad, which contacts with the cooler. Let's look at the cooler and see if, is this a solid plate under here? Yes. So they actually have a solid plate, what looks to be, uh, I'm actually not sure if that's aluminum. I would guess yes or if it's nickel plated, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with probably aluminum. So aluminum plate uh, for direct contact via thermal pad to the VRM components, and that will touch which ones. It's definitely got the MOSFETs covered. And, oh, actually it's the chokes. Chokes are in there. So it'd have to be pretty tight to contact the MOSFETs as well. Doesn't mean it can't, but. Uh, so EVGA has got a couple different types of fin design here. You can see they have the normal straight uh, 90 degree fins. These just allow air to come through from the cooler. The idea of this is that it spreads the heat, but air can come through and dissipate it obviously so that the fins can continue spreading that heat. And then there's these flat ones, uh, which Actually, there's another one too. Where is it? These, these are, they call these L-shaped fins. So this all has to do partly with acoustics, partly with heat spreading, maximizing the surface area by getting that extra little L at the end of the fin there on the end. Um, again, you get into territory where theoretically it makes a lot of sense, but practically it's really difficult to actually test that and know how much it matters. Uh, but just wanted to point out the different types of fins they use. There's a reason for those fins. The L-shaped ones were introduced with ICX, and straight's been around forever. Uh, flat is normally used for blocking off a passageway for one reason or another, or for making direct contact with something, which isn't the case here, but it can be the case on other cards. Underneath, we actually have uh, fan connectors in here for probably a, a triple fan if they wanted to. So down there in the middle, there's a couple more headers, another four pin GPU fan header right here. That could be used to hook up a third fan. They've got two on this card. 
Probably won't see an FTW3 for the 1070 Ti. That'd be a bit excessive, but I think they have the cabling to do it if they wanted to. Uh, heat pipes, we've got uh, one, two large pipes. These are what look to be eight mil. And then we have uh, one, two, three, four, six mil pipes. I think that's all of them. One, yeah, I think that's it. One, two, oh, there's one hiding here. Now, as far as the cooler goes, so the heat sink itself is a bit fatter. And now, let's see, two centimeters thick for the for the actual heat sink. This is a bit large. It's half a slot bigger than the other ones, as you'd expect. Let's look at the board. Same GPU as every other 1070 Ti. So there's your GP104 GPU. And then um, we have a shunt located over here, it looks like. Oh no, here we go. Uh, so that one, two, three. So shunt, shunt, one down here as well. And for components, I think it's going to be the same as the other FTW cards. E6930 is for the memory VRM. We've seen these a lot on a lot of on multiple cards actually, but especially EVGA. So they're still using 6930s over here. So these are on semi NCP 81381s, and these are 25 amp uh, power stages, and they have a peak current capability of 60 amps. As for the phase layout, we have 10 of them. So you can count 10 phases here. So let's walk through the, the VRM a bit. This is our memory VRM right here. These two, these are E6930s. These chokes go with those. And then right here we have 10 uh, chokes and MOSFETs, the on semi FETs, or the, uh, the power stages. So 10 power stages, then if you look over here, we have one, two, three, four, five doublers. Uh, so it's a five phase design. It's one of the better ones. You just, it's, it's a doubled five phase, spreads the heat out over a wider area, and it's more current capability than this card's gonna need stock for sure. Uh, and then for the doublers, okay, so these are on semi also, and they are current balance, they're doublers. Uh, as expected. So on semi doubler is 81162 for the model. And then uh, what about controller? 81274. So that's the board. It's the basics of the PCB. Uh, for recapping key parts here, doubled five phase. We have two on the memory. And uh, the cooler is an extra half slot larger, which measured against our ruler here is uh, two centimeters exactly almost. Oh, actually, so looking at it this way, um, you can see some holes going through here. That's something else they introduced with ICX. It's supposed to help a bit with a few things, uh, like giving the air a channel to be guided through once it gets down into these fins. So once you get into these straight fins, it allows the air some places to escape and dissipate some heat off of the inner circle on its way out. But it's mostly to get heat out, and a, or air and heat, out and away from the PCB. So it's ejecting that way. Uh, it gets a bit away from the board that way you're not just blowing hot air onto the board all the time. So that's the 1070 Ti FTW Ultra Silent, I think it's called. Oh, is that a BIOS switch too? I think that's a BIOS switch on the top as well. Um, unless it's LEDs or something silly like that. Okay, yeah, so there's the card. I don't know what it costs, actually. If it's 500 bucks, then you're obviously entering into the territory of 1080-class hardware, but the cooler is pretty good, so it's going to depend what you're trying to do. We'll review it once we get past all the Titan Volta stuff, uh, but in the very least, you can see what the new EVGA coolers look like and know what they're probably going to look like going forward for whatever happens to be after Volta for gaming. So... That's it for this one. As always, you can help us out directly by going to store.gamersnexus.net slash modmat. If you like the modmat we used for this, you can pick it up there on pre-order, aiming to ship in January 
sometime uh, from the factory. And then if you want to help us out in smaller ways, patreon.com slash gamersnexus is certainly appreciated. You can join our Discord. And that's it. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.